Everybody know this. He ain't Jeezy wasn't no real gang member. Jeezy got money. You know what I'm saying? He got money. And for that girl backstage, may make it publicly clear. Never mind who you thought I was. I'm Rick James, bitch. Check the mic and make sure it sound right. Everybody know this. He ain't Jeezy wasn't no real gang member. Jeezy got money. You know what I'm saying? He got money. He was with the shit. I ain't saying he was a sucker because he wasn't a gang member. But he wasn't a real member. He wasn't somebody that wore around in khakis and had the rag hanging out of his pocket. And goddamn had Chuck Taylor's on and shit. It wasn't him. He might wear that shit for concerts or doing it on stage, but that wasn't him. You got to think about a nigga like him that said they been getting money for that long. They ain't had to wear no dickies and shit. You feel me? Like... Kinky them said they been had they was nigga they they been mean there since teenagers. That's crazy. So just think about it. That's crazy, man. Man, you, you made a statement. I, the reason I was asking you about the over here is because that featured Bond B, but at one point in time, you know, Jeezy and Pimp C, you know what I'm saying, had like a disagreement oh, Pimp C behind, shit. behind the whole like 17, 5 and how Pimp C was crazy. coming out kind of like questioning the authenticity, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying, and all of that and uh it kind of, it didn't really go too left though, but you know, Pimp C was outspoken. <laughs> All right, well after saying that, listen to this. All my statements are my statements. That's how I feel. And feelings is like booty holes. Anybody can have their own feelings. That's my feelings. That ain't got nothing to do with Bun B. Okay, that's the first thing. So let's separate Pimp C statements from UGK and Bun B. That's the first thing we got to do. All right, okay. Next thing we got to do is this. You got some people over there that feel a certain way that I might not like how they feel. But that's how I feel. If you want to get mad at me for the way I feel, then God don't get mad at me. And a fight go with that. You feel me? But Pimp C, why are you so mad? It just seemed like you real angry. You know why I'm mad? Let me tell you why I'm mad. I'm mad because everybody on these records lying. Everybody lying. Everybody's this big E-boy. Everybody's these hardcore gangsters. Everybody gonna do this to each other when they see each other. And the truth be told, we too blessed and we having too much money in this rap game to be going to war with each other. Right. This is what I think needs to be done, man. Come on, man. At the end of these records we listen to, we don't get nothing out of them no more, man. We don't get no social commentary. We ain't get no kind of knowledge out these records. Everybody just talking about how many chains they got on and how much dope they sold. But the truth of the matter is this, I don't believe you, because I know you do, and I know you didn't say no dope. And the, and the next thing is this, say, man, I'm from Texas, man. I'm from the game. Them prices that them boys are talking about, man, them boys ain't got no prices like that, no Atlanta. I agree. You know what I'm saying? So, and I, I think, I, I don't know if I spoke on G-Zone, when it was me and you talking. No, I, I, I don't think, I think it was. I think it was somebody else, and I, and I was saying, Pimp C didn't want to believe Jesus with that 17 fast shit and he wouldn't. He wouldn't believe that shit. And I, I you, I'm, I'm a front, I'm with Pimp. I ain't saying he wasn't getting it on and making it and that never had a bird or a nine. But you wasn't no 50 block nigga, my nigga. Like I don't I mean I, I can't know. I can't I don't and wanna I, believe. And I'm, a fan, I'm a fan of Jeezy. I like I'm, I'm a like fan of his not. music. I, I like yeah. what he stands for. Yeah. I, I believe and, and to him talk that dope talk, he got to know a lot. But you was around it. You was around the biggest ever. The biggest black, you know, situation ever. And I feel like they protected him because he was talented and they knew what he could do. But don't try to sell me something that ain't real. You know what I'm saying? Like, cause that 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 fucked up a lot of niggas thinking that they could be the snowman. That shit was a gimmick. You know what I'm saying? That shit was to sell records. Like, I don't 17 5 is a low fucking number, boy. They and that nigga was And if you do, right now, why ain't some where, where my people at, we'll buy it and flush it down the toilet. We don't support drugs. But show it to me, man, because I know where it on backpacks. I know where they passed they rolled up in Timberland boots in 1998, and they acting like they some big-time drug dealers. Okay? Okay. So right now, this is what I'm telling you. Y'all want to get mad? Get mad at the pimp. Don't get mad at the bond, and don't put the UGK on it. Get mad at the pimp. This is my opinion. This is me. I'm talking. I'm a man. And I stand up. And, and let me say this while I'm at it. All them people that was talking about they want to kill 50 Cent, want to do all that to this man, 
Hey, man, when somebody really wants something to happen to you, it's going to happen to you whether you want it to or not. And I just saw 50 Cent walk off the stage at the BT Awards with no bodyguards right in front of all them dudes that were talking about they were going to slap him when they saw him. And I ain't seen nothing happen to him. Here's the truth of the matter. I love them too. But we got to straighten out the game. And if the statement was made in the wrong context, I apologize about that. But I meant what I was saying. Now, maybe it was heard the wrong kind of way. But what I'm saying is this. Hey, man, when I get out the plane, I got to change my watch. Because I live in Texas, and I'm on Central Time. Okay. All right? That's Central. So that's my opinion. I can have my opinion. Yeah, you, you might can. not like my opinion. But that's my opinion. All right, so everybody running around there basically telling Jeezy, because the magazine hasn't hit the stands that you were uh, pointing him out with the 17-5. And the Meech talk. The what? This says you, it, it make, the magazine's making it seem like you're pointing out Jeezy with the 17-5 talk, and this, it has something and to hear about Meech. And everybody's blowing up Jeezy phone saying that, you know, basically that it's about to be some beef between you and him. So, uh, like, I mean, that's just the talk in Atlanta. And the Russell well, Simmons. Let, 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 let me say this. Let me say this. There's a whole bunch of people lying. So if you want to point fingers at somebody, they point fingers at everybody. If I was going to diss young Jeezy, I would have came right out and said his name and dissed him. I'm not scared of no man. And the next thing is this. They need to free Big Meech because it's all circumstantial evidence. And the next thing is this. Everybody was down and everything was cool with BMF before they got busted. Everybody wanted to be down with the play until they got busted. And then when it went sour, then nobody want to fly the flag no more. Am I lying or telling the truth? I think it's because they ain't want to go to jail, though. Yeah, but they, but they was down when, it, when, the, when the party was going on and yeah. everybody was throwing money in the club. Everybody was still down. So you got to be down in the good time and the bad time. When I went to prison, Bun stayed down with me in the bad time. So when your partner go to prison, you got to stay down in the bad time and the good time. If you was black mafia family in the streets, when they was spending all that money in the strip club, you need to be black mafia family right now when everybody getting indicted. And let me say it again. If I was going to diss somebody, I'm going to say their name to their face and a fight go with that. So now, I ain't diss young Jeezy. Because young Jesus ain't the only one spitting fake dope prices. I'm dissing everybody lying about selling d- drugs that ain't touched a natural. truck. Right. So now, guess what? If you want to charge Bun B 50000 for a verse and then try to come back to me and pay me $1 to get me on your album, guess what you are? You fake and you garbage. If you was a car- cartoon character on your first album, then you need to be a cartoon character on your last one. Wow. Now, let me say this. That's why I'm calling in to let it be known that things I say don't need to reflect on my brother. He can have a relationship with them dudes all he want to. Because truth of the matter is, if you fake and you abroad and we go to a club somewhere and somebody jump on me, you ain't going to help me fight no way. Yeah. You're going to run. So I don't need to be friends with you. And the next thing is this. If I ain't never had a personal phone number on you, I got to call your personal assistant to get to you. No flash. You ain't my friend in the first place. Respect. I'm down with outcasts. The good in my being a close friend of the pimp, what were your thoughts about that, man? It was a strange night, man. I talked to pimp. Uh, the night he got to L.A., me and Ali had a show with Bone Thugs and Harmony in uh, in Denver. Mm. So we was in uh, Colorado when he called. He was like. Yep, I just made it to L.A. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, man, he got there. He went out with Too Short. And I remember he was on some old bulls. Uh, my guy, Pimp C. <laughs> right. Who Rest was like peace. my little brother and who I saw probably 48 hours before he passed. Wow. And I was supposed to meet up with him the day he, not the, I don't know when he passed, but that Saturday he came to my show. And Saturday we said, let's go to dinner tomorrow. And then Sunday we got on the phone and he was like, man, I'm busy. I'm like, damn, I'm busy. We couldn't meet up. And then Monday I didn't talk to him. And then Tuesday they found him. And wow. I'm like, I'm like, so right off the rip, I'm like, what happened? What happened? Like, what happened? And all I get back is, well, he was in his room by himself and they found him. I'm like, well, was the door, did it have that thing on it? Like, was it the lock? Like, like tell me something. Like, you know what I mean? And the most I could get was I never got if the door was locked or not to have to break it down. Because if the door wasn't locked, that means somebody left out. Right. If the door was locked, that means he felt good. He locked it. He was in there. Right. It, it's a whole different level of what happened. A lot of shit goes out the window if I just know that part. Right. But then it's like I heard some shit about he had his clothes on. 
or something. I don't know. Like, I, I don't really know if all this is true, but I just heard parts like, I'm like, what happened to my guy? Right. And then they come out with the official. It was a mixture of some stuff, the prescription and something else or something that I don't really know. But with me, I never really heard uh, something that would give that closure for me. Mm-hmm. I never really heard anything tangible or true, like what happened to my guy. Right. So that's I, crazy. I, I have this theory that's bigger than just Pimp C, and there's a lot of mysterious celebrities, a, a lot of mysterious celebrity deaths mm-hmm. in hotel rooms. Wow. And I remember he was on some old bullshit because <laughs> he was looking for Jesus. <laughs> he was looking for Jesus, man. I'm going to go find Jesus, man. I'm going to talk to Jesus. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, they went and hung out, man. And, um, man, I got to L.A. in the morning. I got a call from Bun. And it was just a lot of shit, man. It was, uh, I think... Got a hold of that fentanyl, man. Mm. And if it wasn't that, somebody put something in it. The whole Dungeon family, I'm down with Jerry Faith. You know what I'm saying? I'm down with Lil John. I'm down with people that get back in touch with me after I call them, man. And if I'm calling you, calling you, calling you to do some work, and you don't get back with me, then you are broad. All you got to do is call me and tell me you don't want to get on the record with me, and that's cool. Right. Hey, Pimp. What yeah. up with, you know, the, the new rappers, they may start to say, well, I have heard people say uh, that you mad because of the new generation is on a whole new movement. What do you have to say about that? Who who, who are the new rappers? Uh, I guess like this a T.I. and a Jeezy and all the one-hit wonders I hear. Yeah, there's a lot. They would say because you think, you're... You, you think T.I. is a one-hit wonder? No, 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 no. no, no. no. We're talking about like the, the, the new artists. Okay, new you see how it works? Yeah. Now like you see how your words can get mixed up? Now like yeah. you see how somebody can write something and then people take it the wrong way? Now, yeah. do you see that? Yeah. Okay, now, let's back up. Now, the new rappers, who are they? Uh, well, well, since you were away and came out, there's T.I., there's Jeezy, there's, uh, what, Flip, and who else? They'll be nice with their rappers. I mean, the, the, <laughs> the list goes on. Like, the list drove, goes on. Young Jock drove. The, um, go, the list goes on, but they, they're saying that, you know, since you were a part of the old game, that you don't respect the, the newer rappers on the scene. I could have swore I was on T.I.'s album. Explaining what the king of the south was, wasn't I? Yeah. Yeah, I was I, I just did a song with Young Jeezy called a Dicky song that didn't come out. And every time he called me to do something, I did it for free and never charged him no money. I could have swore that uh, after uh, Crime Mob took my freestyle off the little chick's uh, mixtape and put it on their album, I didn't even sue them or do nothing to them. I could have swore that every time I get in an interview, I'm taking up for these dudes when it's some New York dudes or some L.A. dudes trying to diss them. I mean, show me one place where I talk down on Young Jock. Show me one place where I talk down on these dudes in a way to say that they're not supposed to be in this game. They're not supposed to be getting money. My thing is this. I want us to continue getting money for the next 15 years instead of falling off and letting it go back to the west and to the east because we're not putting no social commentary into the record. That's and the truth be told is, look, hey, man, if you start to talk about the band... Every statement I made in there, and if you find a place in there where I lied about somebody, I, you research it. Y'all give me a call back and I clarify what I meant. There it is. There it is, Tim. Now, now, guess what? Now, let me say this, and I want it to be clear. I'm not apologizing for what I said. I'm clarifying what I meant by what I said. Right. Okay. We all know in now of the South, we got to start acting like it's a side. And we got to start having some pride like it's a side. And let me say this, and y'all might not like this, because a lot of people don't like stuff. But ATL is considered to be the gay capital of the world right now. 
and y'all got clubs over there with boys standing in the parking lot kissing on the mouth. And you know, if you're gay and you're out of the closet, that's cool because everybody got their preference. But man, it's time to start cleaning up our own neighborhood because a dude from Texas shouldn't have to get on in no magazine to make you clean up your neighborhood. So if I really wanted to diss Atlanta, it was a bunch of things I could have said about a bunch of people and I could have really, really dissed and hurt some feelings. Now, don't you know that? Yes, sir. Because yep. I know who the gay rappers is. I know who let them models stick them dildos in them, and I know who did what, where, when, and why. Wow. So Do you feel like expressing that right now? Yeah, yeah, go ahead, no. Say this again. If you feel I like saying say it, go ahead. Say this again. I'm proud of all the rappers in the South. I'm proud of everybody selling records in Atlanta. But everybody ain't my friend, and I don't like all y'all rep. Now, if you want to diss me and get on with me, go on and do it. But sit between me and them other dudes and diss. You're going to diss me, and I'm going to come see you, Jack. You're going to diss them other dudes, they're going to play lip rouser with you. So if you want it, man, come on with it. If you want it with me, come on with it. Leave burn out of it, and we're going to see in the end, because you're going to smell my cologne. It's in me yaki on some bar number nine, because I do not play. That's the same clone I wear. Tabernacle, <laughs> sanctuary, because we keep God first in everything we do. Hey, bro, Jeezy, I think got his respect for Bun. He didn't really jump out yeah, there. Yeah, we really never jumped out the window. But what, what's your thoughts on that? And you was around but, that time. But you got to yeah, but, I was, but that shit was, you got to understand, Pimp C a legend. Bun B a legend, UGK. I love them niggas, you feel me? I love Bun, I've been around Bun plenty of times, you feel me? And, and UGK, they, they was, they been them niggas, so when he did that, it kind of hurt niggas. It even hurt G's, it hurt a lot of niggas, it was like, damn, not Pimp C. Not Pimp C hating too. Talking about 17-5, ain't no way and all this and all this, but obviously, he was talking to some people about it, and they told him, like, nah, nah, Jesus, nah. He said 17-5, believe it. Now I'm from Fort Rock, Texas, 90 miles away. For the last 50 years, I've been ripping my state. They call me Sweet James, get cocaine. I'm up early, my nigga don't sell dough after night time. Not a pimp, keep the dope beans higher than the good year blimp. I'm choking on that dough, the sweet and sipping on that scissor. So nigga scared on it up, smoking ice, going up. Trademark, smoke some beer, drop seven in the pie. pie. Hit it with the soda. Kids don't wanna stop. And no, at the time of that beef, we niggas at the at the midst of that beef, we had a concert, nigga, in Texas, in Houston, right? I don't know why, I don't know what was going on, but we usually roll deep, right? But I guess Jeezy was on some shit, like I don't want to roll deep, cause I don't want them niggas to think we coming for a problem. You feel me? We ain't even worried about that pimp C shit. You know what I'm saying? But. We didn't roll deep when we went to that motherfucker. It was just me, him, um, I think a girl named, his assistant named BB at the time, and one security guard, right? Right, but we had 13 guns. 13 guns, you might think I'm capping. We had more guns than we could shoot in the truck with us, nigga. Right, we in the car. It's about 100 niggas walking up. It's Jay Prince and them, Pimp C. They a hundred deep. They at the back door. They, they walk past, cause our trucks is right here. We had three trucks, but we didn't need all three cause it wasn't up for three of us, right? <laughs> so we had a truck in the front, it was our truck, and we had another truck. So we see all the niggas coming, right? So we tell we tell BB, his assistant at the time. We tell her, hey, you get in that truck, tell the driver take you back to the room, right? That's what it is. We don't know we on some shit. Cause we don't know what might happen, you feel me? So she get in the truck behind us. We tell her, go to the room. Go to the room. When we make it there, you will see us. If we don't, you know what to do. We either locked up or something. So she leave. So they at the back door. They deep, cuz. They ain't number three of us. I'm talking about they deep. Big niggas too. Big. I'm talking about they deep. But ain't nobody scared. I don't know if my security was scared, but we would. Oh, me and Jeezy would. So we got, no lie, we got 13 guns right here just spread. So we in the truck chilling. So I tell G, I'm like, fuck, I'm like, I'm like, fuck it. No lie, right hand to God. Nigga say I'm lying or whatever. Jesus, if you ask him, he say I'm lying. He's a fucking fool. 
Nigga, I put a desert eagle in my drawers, nigga. Hey, I said, I'm about to get out and check the temperature. I got a CTE chain on and my CTE shirt. So I get out, I get out the truck, boom, shut the door. They looking back, but you know, I'm just acting like I'm on the phone talking, right? Just trying to see what the next move gonna be. So they looking, but ain't nobody doing nothing. Next thing I know, here comes somebody from the club. They come to our truck. It was like, hey man, Pimp C and them, Jay Prince and them right here, they wanna get in. And Jeezy's like, let them in. What, what you come to tell me for? They paying, ain't they? Let them in. But see, everybody know about the beef that was going on, right? So I guess Jay Prison them had fucked around and paid for the whole upstairs VIP too. So they go in. So ain't no problem, because if it was a problem, they would've did it right now. I just jumped out the truck. I got my CT chain on, CT shirt. But you know, so we get in the club, no lie. As soon as we get in the club, Jeezy go on stage. Nigga, we kind of stood there. Everybody stood there just looking like me, him, DJ. We just like, the fucking club is all Mexicans. All Spanish folks, cuz. I'm talking about Span Mexicans every fucking where. They throwing crack on stage, weed on stage, cell phones on stage, money on stage. No lie. We kicking the shit back out in the crowd, cuz. Nah, no lie. Man, Jeezy do the song when he when he addressed Pimp C. And he tell the DJ, when I say this part, cut the shit off, nigga. Cut the beat off on the acapella. Here come the part, Jeezy cut it off. 17-5, yeah, nigga, I said it. 17-5, yeah, nigga, I meant it. Nigga, they go crazy in that bitch. <sighs> they go crazy. And then, shit, we got off stage and went home, shit. There wasn't no issue. Well, no issue. Pimp C was in the building. Yeah, Pimp C was in the building. And as a matter of fact, Jay after Pimp that, Pimp after that, before Pimp C died, he was trying to reach out to Jeezy. Jeezy wouldn't take his call. And he ended up dying. No okay. cap. But True story. Pimp, Jeezy you know, came out some interviews, said, you know, said some respectful stuff about no, Pimp No, because, because it, it was never no disrespect. Yeah. Like, on, was, on y'all end. On our end, it was never no disrespect. But the shit got mixed up because Pimp C was trying to get in touch with Jeezy. And, but he never had Jeezy number. He had Coach K number. So Pimp C felt like, what kind of real nigga give me his manager number? You know, Pimp C was a real nigga, you know what I'm saying? But I think it was just miscommunication called Jeezy would have gave the number to him. You feel me? I think it was just miscommunication and Pimp C just took it up too emotional and too far. But, but Jeezy, like you said, Jeezy never came back disrespecting him or nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Off the love of Bun though, but off the love of UGK. How can we be for UGK? Like, that wouldn't, even, that wouldn't even sound right. That's crazy. We listen to their music every day just to beef with them. Cause we would listen to their shit on the bus and everything. Like, how can you not? So, after that, I mean, it was just, that was some bullshit beef. That wasn't yeah. nothing. Cause that shit was over. Man, that's crazy, bro. I ain't never heard that story, man. No, nah, cause that's, nobody knows that story. Nobody knows that story of us going to that club. But ask Jeezy. I mean, ask Jeezy or find a, or find a girl BB or find whoever our security was. And it was another nigga from Houston named Black that always fucked with us. I don't know where he at now, but he was there too because he was standing outside our truck because he was holding us down too. Yeah. But it was only three of us. Really, the whole crew was about to come. I don't know what happened. It ended up being me and Jeezy, security and BB with 13 pistols. Damn. No lie. But we was going to go about the CTE shit. That's what I'm saying. Like, the shit that we did behind the CTE shit is unthinkable. Good. Damn, that's crazy, bro. Oh, yeah, RIP to Pimp C, man. Yeah, RIP Pimp C.